All right. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the country's apex advertising agency, um, Akon, revealed on Tuesday that the advertisement on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp in the Nigerian market are not vetted and approved by the federal government. Akron then sat, uh, asserted that such continued unscrutinized adverts and other publications emanating from Mark Zuckerberg's meta-owned social media platforms are illegal, unlawful, and a violation of the extant um, advertising law in Nigeria, thus seeking a 30 billion for punitive damages. Hey, Salubwa. Now, according to Flevi, <laughs> digital transformation is being embraced by companies across most industries as the role of technology shifts from being a business enabler to a business driver. Transformation is driven by six technology trends, which are social media, mobility, Internet of Things, cybersecurity, big data, and cloud. So what ways do you think small businesses can leverage technology? Now, that's a question. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Let me first of all say, happy birthday, Manny. I apologize, and I'm doing it live on TV. I was waiting for you to be here first. I missed her birthday. Her birthday was October 2nd. I can never forget that day again in my life. But happy birthday again. Thank you. <laughs> we're still boning, though. Yes. I know. I'm, I'm going to get you. I, I've already told you. We're going to get ice cream. Okay. We're going to get ice cream. <laughs> Till oh, then. It's supposed to get this year. <laughs> Till then. But hey, Manny. I mean, when I saw that thing with Meta, why do they always say Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg owned? <laughs> why do they always do that? Yeah. But hey, when I saw that thing, I was wondering... I mean, yesterday I was at an, uh, at an event where I was mm. um, comparing for um, a, 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 an organization that tries to support small businesses, right? Okay. And, part, and the, interestingly, the head of Meta was there. And interesting, mm. you know, she was saying that, you know, the, the switch mm. as to how business, you know, before it was just social, whatever, on Facebook and all of that, the switch happened even again, they saw that tremendous leap with COVID and all of that. Yeah. A lot more people be began to take their social media presence very seriously, seriously yeah. and they started using it to, you know, push their yeah, small business. businesses and the growth, growth that some businesses have experienced just by, I know how many things I put on my WhatsApp status yeah. and I hear people, people send me messages all the time. I said, I wish I was charging for this thing because... If I put up something, the next day I'm getting like three messages, please, where is this place? I want to visit, mm -hmm. right? So I can now imagine somebody that is really deliberate about pushing a business or a product on social media. They are making a ton of money and they really helped small businesses. Yeah. So why do you think this is even fair for a government agency, you know, to come online and say, oh, we don't want this or maybe there's a violation and something? What other alternatives have you provided for small? Because this is the mm -hmm. only thing that small yeah. businesses, in my opinion, can't can afford it, because yeah. you see before before you take a page you remember when we had the ceo of hagan esther here when she was talking about how they'll go and pay for those um newspaper those publications. wedding newspaper publications yeah. and all of that and they will pay through their nose and they don't even see it wasn't even measurable but with the social media it it um it broke the monopoly and everybody could actually transact businesses right mm. on with technology but let me hear your thoughts lc no, or let money confess that <laughs> Okay, you know, like what you just said now, prior to this time, like this period, this season, if you wanted to do, place any advertisement, it would be in the newspaper. And one of the downsides of placing advertisement in newspapers is because you don't know your audience. You're just gambling. You just throw it out there. This is a target. You know, yeah. so now using social media, you are targeting your audience, mm -hmm. your market. And if these people are coming and saying that this is not allowed, then I think that the government, what we talk about every time is create an enabling environment doing business. for businesses Absolutely. to thrive. So if they come now and say this is no longer accepted, it just means that the government is actually witch hunting us. <laughs> that's just honestly that's not just what it feels like. They are witch hunting us. Mm -hmm. Like let us grow. You understand? Somebody asked me yesterday, how do you get clients? This is an honest question. It happened mm. yesterday. How do you even get clients money? I said, it's referrals. Mm. Because what else? We're not allowed to market, mm -hmm. you understand, in my profession. So how do you get clients? So we put out one or two publications. People see us. They read our articles and they call us and say, okay, so you know. So if they are telling us that we can't do this, then they are trying to actually ruin our business. And there's a survey that shows that prior to this um, internet um, disruption, um, um, COVID period, yeah. 
businesses, their lifespan of startup was five years. Mm. After five years, they disappeared. Mm -hmm. They were non-existent. So if the social media platforms are helping to boost businesses, why will the government be against it? Well, let me listen to our oh. digital marketer. Digital and communication experts. Wow. Okay. So again, I, I when I saw the story, I I just like to take away the part of dragging FG into it because mm. that's what most of the media publications did. did mm -hmm. yes. And I was I mean I'm I'm definitely going to raise that with some of them. Let's have our arguments. But it also shows the level of unprofessionalism that comes um, in that space when they are trying to report something. It is Acon. Mm. Just mention the association. You don't need to put. Federal FG government, there, mm -hmm. so it then gets a lot of weight, right? Traction. But it's also good because yes, we are having this conversation now, and I, I have a bit of background to the whole drama. So I'm taking a course. Um, I mean, part of the plenty of courses I'm taking mm -hmm. at BAU is one that would um, give me uh, one that's endorsed by Acon. Mm -hmm. So if I can take that certification, I would then become a member, member. of Acon, right? And um, one of their uh, man or member official, I don't know what to call him right now, came and took us a session. So that session was to take us through the um, do's and do's, do's and don'ts, the laws and everything to become a member and how you vet adverts and all that. I remember that before now, in fact, now what happens is if you want to put your advert on radio, TV, and newspaper, you actually get approval from Acon. That's the practice right now. And they charge, I think, about 25,000 naira, right? Mm -hmm. So while he was going through that session and then he talked about the approval phase, he then mentioned that um, businesses are supposed to approve every marketing communication content that is going out on digital platforms as well. And then, of course, the class became heated because the class of about 20 people running, Digital some are working in agencies, yes. some are running their businesses, some are representing big brands um, in that capacity, right? I was still asking questions. So are you saying that for every post that a business puts out, because um, no matter how you um, write your copy, the goal of mm. you up uploading stuff on your Instagram or Facebook is to get people to know your business, know your brand, and uh, at the end of the day, convert, right? Mm. And he's saying for everything that goes out, they need to pay. So I asked him, I said, are you saying that if we're going to put out 20 posts in a month, mm. we're supposed to pay 25K times 20? Oh, he said, oh, so if, it's, if, it's the pro if that's the problem, if the money is the problem, then how would we feel if they have conversations and reduce it to a thousand naira per post, per post for mm. digital okay. media? And we said that's still not the point of the issue because at the end of the day there is always cost of um, mm. customer acquisition right and i mean in fintech space where i've worked a bit you hear um CAC and all that so if you're adding this extra cost to the business that we can say when you are even promoting you're probably targeting five percent of people you will have reached hope in hope that they would convert right how is that going to affect the bottom line at the end of the day i just had to let him know that I understand because he is saying that they want to protect the consumers, mm. right? I don't know who these consumers are, but he's saying, do we agree that consumers need to be protected? Oh, well and good, they need to be protected, right? But you cannot want to protect a digital space with a traditional tool, mm. right? So if we agree now and say the whole business in Nigeria will be sending you our copies for every month yeah, to very problem. What can you do? What do you have the capacity? To Again, very quickly, because I know what's been yeah. in our guest. Um, Google, Facebook, uh, Meta, right? Yeah, Facebook really, not really Meta in this case. They they vet your 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 content mm -hmm. before it goes out there. And that takes less than 10 seconds, seconds right? Yes. You see it, you know if there's a problem. They'll say the advert you know in, in, in review. Right, in review, and you know. Are you having conversations with these people to plug? If it's about the consumers, let them know the kind of words you don't want to be displayed in Nigeria. Because mm. if, for example, if when I try to promote a casino um, business or even pharmaceuticals, mm. there is already a law that certain countries will block it. And there's an agreement between that country and mm -hmm. Meta and Facebook and Google to know that for us, so we, we don't, don't want this. It. Have you started mm, that yeah. conversation? Mm. If it's truly about the consumers, why are you <laughs> slamming 30 billion naira? No, it's not about the consumers. I think they are just, they've seen the boom in Thank that Thank you. They're just space. trying to so and that's that's also make money. money. That's that's it. It. <laughs> okay, Jeffrey has over 18 years of sales and business management experience in six industries. 11 years of that um, he's done in the 
fintech space. His work experience covers both local and international and multinational brands like NCR and Atlanta, InterSwitch, and Number. He's an expert in sales optimization, business and market development with a focus on achieving ex um, exceptional results in a highly competitive business environment that demands continuous improvement and volume slash profit focus results. He's an alumnus of the Lagos and Columbia Business School um, and he also is a trained Milan, Milian Heyman and value selling methodology. He is a safe, agile and AI practitioner and currently a mentor in the Google Africa Startup Accelerator Program and Mest in Ghana. He's a friend of the house and he's joined us live in studio. Hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> I had to add that oh. part. <laughs> Jeffrey, Good evening, everyone. I mean, so this conversation is quite interesting because this, my madam here, is the communication and di marketing digital mm. experts, you know. But I think she really broke it down. But in my opinion, I feel like what this uh, Akon is trying to do is just trying to, they are trying to take a chunk of that part because they know. Even me in my small space, I know how much I've spent with adverts, you know, ads on Instagram and, and all of that. But hey, this has happened, right? Because again, the reason we are not really focusing on what Akon has done, we just had to put it as a foundation. Mm -hmm. We want to know the impact because we say all the time that for your business to be able to scale, you must be able to infuse technology to that business. Mm -hmm. And small businesses have understood this and they are now taking advantage of every single digital platform that they see, mm -hmm. every um, technology tool that they find, and they are seeing the direct impact on their bottom line. They've yeah. seen growth, they've seen sales and all of that. So when we start to see things like this, definitely there will be an impact, right? So how do we even start to navigate? And what, first of all, are your thoughts on the, if you, if you have an opinion? You know, some people try to avoid all these kind of mm -hmm. issues, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do have maybe a short um, comment on that. Then we go into what we want to talk about. Law is a law. Revenue is revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, if this was in another country, would we have the same opinion? I think just the distrust that we have is making us a bit mm. emotional about it. Your country has a law. The law needs to be respected. Whether it is for or against, that's a different conversation. Do we have a law that says certain adverts needs to be censored? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we have a law that if you post an advert, um, you would need to pay? Yes. Now, I like your comment. Do they have the technology to support yeah. what they're trying to do? No. no. <laughs> Can you bridge the brick and mortar system that you have today with the speed of digital technology that nope. Meta is presenting? No. But are you entitled to something? Yes, if it is reasonable, because that's the law. Um, if, we, if it was our own business, we would not have the same. If this was first in, say, um, Germany or the UK or where, wherever, we will not have the same because we feel that that country would be objective in the way it's going to approach the matter. So we'll probably Thank support you. it. Mm -hmm. But the distrust that we have today about everything else that we've seen is why people are fighting against this and how this may be managed, uh, if not right, mm -hmm. and how it will impact every other businesses that leverages the same, yeah. the same place. But do we have the right to take money for every advert? Yes. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have the um, law to back that up? Yes, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. But I did read um, in some of the posts that they've been trying to have this conversation, but they are not getting the attention that they require. Mm -hmm. This is why the lawsuit is coming. If they had the attention to have this conversation and find some framework um, to partner to do this, maybe the lawsuit yeah. wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So I think what they're trying to do is get something from from maybe... Uh, they just want a chunk uh, of it. Something. Uh, uh, talk, okay. Don't yeah. worry. Meta, we no, they, 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 did, they did say that, that there should be some revenue <laughs> coming to them um, as well. So let's see how it pans out. Yeah. I, I don't think, think they have the power to stop I it. I think they should but, have said that and had that conversation with Meta and then we will not even hear about all these they things. They said they've been trying to mm. and it's just not been so, forthcoming. So to, yeah. talk to, to speak to that trying to, right, I also think the fundamental problem is what you've mentioned, the way we handle things Thank that is you. not objective, right? So we have, sure. when, when the ban happened on Twitter, right, it bettered a whole new policy document. That is on that side, right? Mm -hmm. Then another one came out, I think last two months or three months, they call it that or something, a policy on still digital um, economy and what is allowed and what is not allowed. Sure. 
The problem is all these agencies and parastatals and everything, they're working in silos. Yeah. If they were all working together, together yeah. then that document should be able Applied. to have all encompassing. Yeah. Accounts issue yeah. in it, and yeah. account will not need to say we are having a conversation with Meta and they are not reaching out. But let's just get into our let's get into our conversation. <laughs> so the, um, uh, Jeffrey, we we try to make sure that our Fridays we give something back to small businesses because we believe that eighty percent of the they are the biggest employers of labor and 80% of the businesses in this country or well 41.7 yeah. million MSMEs registered registered so. yeah mm. so it's, it, it is a huge yeah. is a huge mm. um, part of our economy that we cannot afford to just look away yeah. right Absolutely. so i mean now technology everybody's shouting that tech is the new whatever tech is the new future mm. tech is this right so if you are to sit in front of a small business right what would you be saying to a small business right now? How should they begin to look at, and um, how should they begin to, you know, leverage tech? You know, how should they see tech and their business marrying each other? Okay, um, you know, I always like to break things down so mm -hmm. it's easy for people to to understand. So let's first agree what is a small business. How would you guys define what is a small? Let me now take over the anchoring now. <laughs> <laughs> how would you guys define a small business? Say two hundred thousand to two million a month. Mm -hmm. Income would that be a, a yeah, good that's yeah. a small business. Uh, between three to maybe ten staff yes. strength? That would be a small business. Yes. Okay, um, let's look at three ways in this type of business. Look at growth. You look at sales growth. You look at customer. You look at maybe location, multiple location, right? And then you probably look at marketing, right? the things that you do. Growth comes from these three, three, um, four parts. So let me just reiterate that: the sales, customer marketing and of course multiple locations that you're trying to spread out. Technology is very important if you're going to achieve growth in these four areas. Um, a lot of tools are available that you can download on your device to manage sales. Mm -hmm. And how does that enable growth? Um, if you're able to see the numbers of your business, then you're able to take better decisions. That for, that, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. If you're able to um, itemize what you're selling and, and attach that to an inventory, then you're able to spend more in restocking. You're able to channel your money into the right part of your business for the kind of growth that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to look at trends to see when do people buy more, uh, what item should I stock at what yeah. time, um, what day of the week should I give more attention or put more people on the front line, these are the reasons why people go into technology because that is the visibility that you get from a sales point of view. If you're trying to grow sales but you don't have visibility to data, you don't have visibility to your inventory turnaround time, if you don't have visibility to how each of your items are doing at your various business locations, then I don't think growth will really come. And that's what technology helps with. Mm -hmm. And before it used to be expensive because a lot of companies go with a product-led uh, business model, but now you have a SaaS-led business model. Some people even offer freemium, and then it's only when you want to unlock certain parts of that technology or solution that you then begin to pay for. Pay for um, and we're blessed in Nigeria because even the digital, uh, the fintech companies are providing these tools at, without any costs and all you just need to do is use that platform and then they charge every time they add value to your business, which mm. is people use. Oh, there's a sale and all of that. Okay, Fantastic. you know what, let's quickly go on a very short break. When I come from the break, I, I'm sure the ladies have questions for you. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing leveraging technology to grow small businesses. And we have with us Jeffrey Williams Edem. Now remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, Mani, I thought you had a question. Okay, so um, as good as we know that these um, technology solutions are to small businesses, we also know that it costs some money. So how do these small businesses go about <clears throat> using this um, technology to enhance their businesses and at the same time, this cost would not even affect their businesses more? Well, um, 
There will be cost, without doubt. Um, it is the impact now we need to talk about, and I, I have some recommendations around that. You are used to using your phone. Mm -hmm. um, you don't download any app. You are certain about the apps you want. You take the time to research it. You use it for a couple of days. Uh, this is not what I want. You, you delete, even before you start to commit to it. I don't think that there are any apps now that, or there are a lot of apps now where you have to pay first before you can even download. So it's you have, exactly, yeah. there's usually something sure. that allows you to, to check. So my advice to people, uh, small businesses, is first understand the type of business that you run, understand the gaps that you're trying to address. Because okay. if you don't understand the gaps that you're trying to address, then you'll be swayed to any app that anybody else is uh, referring to you. And when you are certain about the kind of apps that you um, want to use, then try to use it for some time, then decide how you want to pay for it. Now, because I've used a couple of these apps before, and because a lot of the fintechs are now embedding these sales tools within their platforms, which are now free for you to, to register and onboard your business, the storefront uh, type of businesses, you are able to only pay at the point of using or it's adding value, so I mentioned that earlier. Um, so in this case, a company can say, I will charge you 0.5% of the tr business or the sales that you've done on the platform. Some will say I'll charge you 1.5%, depending on, some even have like a ban. If, you, if it's 10,000 Naira, 5,000 Naira, I will take 15 Naira or 100 Naira. Okay. Mm. So these are not a lot of costs yeah, okay. compared to the value. And the value is not only about the fact that it's a sales tool, but it's keeping data. It is giving you visibility. It's allowing you to manage your business considerably end to end if, because some of them have receipts and subscriptions and a way to remind people that they are owing you and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about growth, right? Yeah. Small business growth. One of the technology that we've seen and it's rapidly building up is lending. Yeah. It takes a lot for you to take on, a lot of process for you to take on lending. Now you can get a digital platform, get registered in 24 hours, get access to money to run your business. Mm -hmm. In fact, some models do not transfer the risk of that lo loan to you as the business owner. They transfer it to the person buying from you. Mm. So by getting on a digital platform, you are opening your business to multiple customer pools of different types. Those who want to buy um, outside your current domain, those who want to buy using credit, those who want to buy small or large amount, those who want delivery service that, of course, most of these platforms have now digitized. So your scope of business just expands expand, with yeah. technology. Mm. You know, so, so, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I was going to say that I know that the importance of tech for businesses cannot be emphasized, but I wanted to speak to um, upskilling, right? So tech is something that the trends now, it, it changes every day, not even, it don't even once anymore. You wake up today and there is something, a, there's something changing, yeah. even just on your Twitter, Facebook and all, right? How would you advise small business owners um, to keep up, especially in terms of marketing and understanding how this algorithm are changing works, yeah. and how it works to also help their businesses? Okay, I don't understand that question. <laughs> <laughs> so are we speaking from a marketing point yes. of view or the choice of technology? Both. So Both. whatever technology you use now, um, there's always an upgrade, right? Yes. But mm -hmm. if you want to leave it at marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of, like you mentioned, the small businesses we have now, we use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to ensure that um, we reach the audiences that we want, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I just want you to speak to people who are using it because I've had conversations with some people and they say, you know what, I was doing this before. I know that if I want to post on Instagram, I click here, I post. But now, I can't see where to post, right? It's just a regular conversation, but you okay. realize that it's, it's giving a lot of people stress mm -hmm. and you realize that they have to now go to the top right to post. You know, how to just um, navigate. Navigate and just ensure that you are still understanding what Updated. you're doing for okay. your business. Okay, yeah. I think I, I have clarity now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So if you don't need something, mm -hmm. don't get it. Simplicity still works. Mm -hmm. If your business is to copy and paste, and you are not editing, don't get an editing tool. 
The problem is that a lot of technology companies are building ecosystems. They are mm. trying to build it more robust, yeah. more enterprise, make technology and innovation cheaper and available. Maybe today you don't ha need it. Tomorrow you will need Mind it. Is. So let me, put, let me put all that in there. In mm. doing that, it's good because it serves the innovative um, need of the market. But in also doing that, we've seen cases where they've either confused the current users yeah. or they've just made things even worse than how it was before. Mm -hmm. Now, as a user, when you find yourself in that kind of situation, stick to what you know, stick to what you need. Remember mm -hmm. my first basic comment is, if you know what you need as a small business, that is what you should be looking out for. Just because new things are available does not mm, mean that you. it's for you. Mm. So stick to that thing that is, that is working for your business mm -hmm. until the business has grown to a point where you need mm, something yeah. addition. Now, it doesn't mean that you are not going to um, research and try to venture into, into looking at new things. But mm. before you do that, do a trial, read about it, ask people. One thing we don't do that the Western world does very well is that we don't give reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why people don't like talking about things. It's a waste of time. So if you... Get, <laughs> it's a waste of, that, oh, come no, on. That's, that's what we think. Because but, even when you go to... Maybe you go and stay in a hotel, they tell you, please, can you give a review? But we most people back, don't. No. I, I don't done. know. I don't know whether it's a culture thing. Yeah. Somebody will break that barrier some, some way with technology and all of that. But in the Western... Somebody buys this glass. In two weeks, you see almost a thousand yeah. comments about it, and it and gives it you an informed comments. decision around your decision on what tech to use. Mm -hmm. But here, so if you can find the review part of that solution, try to look into it mm -hmm. and see what other users are saying about yeah. it as well. You, you know, um, if we know now, I'm a product manager <laughs> in the making, and I, I mean, mm -hmm. what, what you just said now is is true because. There's some new features we just added on the platform. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to have a meeting with my customer experience person. Um, person and the field guy to now educate them on these new features. Because again, you don't want the user to wake up and they are confused that what was I pressing before? So imagine you are educating you your know, customer experience. Yes, I have to, yes, so because they have to educate. They will not have to go and get they, Yeah, budget. because they are, they are in, in charge mm -hmm. of direct to customers. I am back end, you know. That's so, what we are talking about. <laughs> it's you know? good to hear you say all this. Things yeah, now. Jeffrey knows my journey. <laughs> You know, so I'm learning, I'm learning as a product manager mm -hmm. to understand, like, you know, I was speaking with my boss the other day. He says, Uwa, now you're becoming a product manager. You know, you know why? Because the salespeople tell you, oh, the customer wants this, customer wants this. I say, and I told them, I said, no, what is important? Okay, so this one is not relevant. It's not priority. So I'm able to tell them that even though you want certain kinds of tools, mm -hmm. at some point, you really don't need them. You mm -hmm. can actually make do with what you have. Mm -hmm. Minimum, you know, simplicity yeah. is the best when it comes to using any form of technology. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you start to complicate it, even you, Becomes, you, you become confused. And also tying that to a business model. Is absolutely. This what we want to do? Absolutely. Yeah. So I was going to speak to fintech. Well, you mentioned something about fintech. Again, yesterday we were talking about how CBN is beginning to say, bless you, we want to give some fintech lessons because as they did like this, and they've come to disrupt everything. They've made life so easy for a lot of businesses. People are now waking up to say, okay, you know what? Look at what you just said. I can wake up today, open an account, get loan, get this, get that. Yeah. These are solutions that could never have been possible, you know, mm -hmm. if we had gone with a the few years traditional, ago. yes, if we, a few years ago, the traditional banking, right? So how do um, small businesses, because they're, they're, they're springing up every day, right? Mm -hmm. And they're really good, fantastic solutions. So if you were to give a counsel on this fintechs as well, their solutions that they're bringing for small businesses, mm -hmm. how do you, t what are the parameters you would tell them to look out for, you know, in dealing with those fintechs? Because some of them are really giving great solutions. Well, start the journey right and the journey starts from the owner of the business mm. the problem is the owner of the business in most fintechs do not exist everybody is the owner mm. and so they have an opinion about what the market wants there is no true ownership as to that if everything is narrow-headed to a department or a person it is easy to streamline the requirement the needs from outside the company and within the company then it goes to the product person mm. who is supposed to bring to life the market value that that business yeah. person is trying to create. Mm. If you're truly a business person, your first journey starts from what is the need of the market, That's not what you feel is, is going to be good as mm. an idea. 
that's why most times when I sit in present business presentations or product demo, mm -hmm. the questions I ask would be, did you do a voice of customer? Did you understand what your other competitors are doing? Yeah. Did you find out which market you are going after? Yes, of course, fintech is broad. Yes, the market is broad. Are you building for the food industry? Are you building for the energy industry? Are you building for the agri mm -hmm. um, um, industry? So the more narrower that need and that knowledge and that statistics is, the easier it is for product to develop a product fit or market product market fit, um, uh, is it product market fit? I think so. Yes. Uh, to, <laughs> to, 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 to provide value for, for the market. So my advice would be that, mm. get the business right, do your market research properly, have a pool of customers that you go to to ask information. And you, today, technology makes it easy. You can have a WhatsApp group, you can have a Slack group, you can have your, any Twitter group, whichever group you want to go to. Do a quick survey. Almost everything today has the survey button where Absolutely. you can just, just ask. Click forms and you ask. know, I remember some months back, um, although one of my fabulous products uh, lead, she's now in, 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 in Microsoft. She, uh, we're having a conversation around, let's do something for, for the small businesses. And I was fighting for a particular value. And she was like, you know what, Jeffrey? I disagree with you, and I'm going to find out what the market really needs. Mm. She went on her social media and then put a small post out there. And I thought that people wanted that particular value. And by the time we went round Nobody all social media, it. it was like third. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that at the time that I knew it, but it means that innovation yeah, and customer need have keep, changed. It keeps yeah. changing. Mm. So any fintech who comes and says they want to copy a 10-year-old exactly. company to build their own value without understanding what the current market is mm. asking for won't work. Will, won't work. Because mm. the value and the need that made that company exist 10 years ago may not be the current market reality. Absolutely. When is your turn to build something into, into the market? So qu mm. quickly, I want to ask, um, small businesses, must every small business use social media as a tool? as a technology tool for their businesses? Is it a must? Um, it's the same question by asking, must every person have a cell phone? Hmm. Is it a must? Hmm. I'm giving back to you. <laughs> have I answered or do I still answer? If the intention of the business is to grow and to reach hmm. customers, then yes. So, oh, no, because it's not so, even a phone yeah. is technology. No, 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 no. Yes. I'm saying the social media part of technology. There's yes. technology for software yes. and all of those. Yes. There's There's social media with technology. So, so yes. Mm. yes. So it's important. So, yes, because social media allows you to compartmentalize your approach to selling, which mm -hmm. is you can have understanding of the type of customers you want to speak to. You can target the type of people rich, you want to, you can expand your That's scope of customer mm. or the pool of customers That's to right. other domains that you will not necessarily reach from where you are. Yeah. Trans local transport is more expensive. The roads are not very fantastic. Now, people, I mean, today, somebody calls and says to me, Jeffrey, you've got so much content. You've been on TV, radio, everything, your social media page, your LinkedIn page is like a book to read. Why don't you do videos mm, and put that, yeah, like yes. master classes yeah thank you master class we help you package <laughs> it don't worry we'll find the people and where are they going to find those people social media yeah. social yeah. media yeah. Oh, i'll get you yeah, yeah, because listen. i was going to even ask you about trainings because there's so many people who actually want to leverage on technology but they are mm. not trained mm. for instance my mom doesn't know anything about how to reach anybody on social media you know, so how do they get these trainings? Well, you just said, mentioned this master class. Mm -hmm. So I think if we have more people, more professionals. They should listen to Wiz yeah. every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> we train people for free. So I, <laughs> think, I, think, I think there needs to be a shift. Mm -hmm. And I hope that maybe someday in Africa there would be. YouTube has a massive collection of educative videos. Absolutely. Yeah, but true. you find receptionists, people that have routine jobs where customers don't really come in. Sometimes when I get the privilege of finding those ones, and I say, what are you doing on your phone? Do you know you can literally get Learn. educated, educated. I, I say, certification? I yes, just watching you know, YouTube I say videos. You my lawyers all the time. I say you, you can, can get your master's degree Just, on, Just on pick something yeah. that you have interest in. Pick a yeah. knowledge area. And you'll be amazed about yeah. the so much professionally made yeah. videos on yeah, the catalog for free. For free. Mm -hmm. for free.
You know what? Even for small businesses. You don't know what you want to do again. When we, say, when we tell them, they say, you know, they want to be watch, watching something. I will not call that one. But <laughs> <laughs> So just to speak a bit more Quickly, around, yeah. around um, leveraging technology as well. There is a big part of that for companies that have multiple locations. Technology makes it operations cheaper. Mm. Yeah. Technology makes it easier for you to know how to distribute your assets, which is the funding. Mm. Technology makes it easy for you to manage inventory, even across this multiple location. Without technology, it's going to cost you a lot more to go around mm. and interact and distribute your minimal resources across. Absolutely. From a customer's perspective, technology allows you to understand your customer, understand the buying the journey, behavior. understand um, what is it that they like to buy, understand the lifetime value mm -hmm. of your customers. Mm. The cost it takes me to get this customer over the period in which this customer continues to remain my customer is what a customer lifetime value is. Those are valuable KPIs that small businesses can use to continue to build and grow using just simple technology to manage their customer, mm. keep the name of the customer, attach the receipt to the customer. You know, you can even give credit based on the customer's profile. History. You can improve the average spend per customer mm. by targeting those customers by sending them WhatsApp messages mm. or the right kind of coupons or images Absolutely. and all of that. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what I see in in a nutshell, your guest has said it all. We need to understand the type of businesses we are getting into. Then we need to add exposure for patronage, for building of that business through technology. Happy birthday to you, my dear beautiful sister, Money Money. God bless you, long life and sound health. It's your portion in Jesus' name. It's been Amen. a while. We miss you a lot. My name is Daniel Ilo, who is regular. Fine. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> thank you so much. They have helped me to apologize again. But thank you so much, Jeffrey. I said, this one is master class. They should just be watching with every Friday. Yeah. I, yeah. As, as yeah, Jeffrey, we, we, we free his time for us. We, we continue to bring him. But I think, I mean, today was an amazing conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you have a small business, honestly, uh, you do not have an excuse to fail, as far as I'm concerned. The world is actually waiting for you, because this yeah. is your time, in all honesty. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. No problem. Thank you, Manny. Nice. Thank you, Elsie. All right, before we go, to ensure you follow us everywhere, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere. Technology. At Africa. Yes, it's technology. <laughs> <laughs> follow us. Make sure you share, please. Don't be watching. Don't be stingy. Watch. Don't share with your families, friends. Invite everyone to come watch us. And follow the conversations as well. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Um, at least 40% of all businesses will die in the next 10 years if they do not figure out how to change their entire company to accommodate new technologies. This is alarming, but if you do what is right now, you will not be part of that percentage. We'll see you guys on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>